when I first heard recently about what happened to these lovely children in the residential schools, it actually broke my heart. And it made me sad, unbelievably sad. I've been trying to um, work and I've learned a lot about, you know, the First Nations people for a long time. Uh, I went on the March of the Remembrance and Hope with indigenous people uh, on at least 17 times. And I met many of them. And I remember quite clearly that suddenly it had an idea that I had one, one of the indigenous uh, uh, women that was with me was a mature woman. She was you know, going to get her PhD, which she recently actually got in Vancouver. And uh, I said, I said, and I discussed it with her and she said, you know, um, my mother is a residential, a residential school survivor. And this was in 2009. And suddenly I thought to myself, you know, the important thing is that the people in Canada, the white people, the other people, everybody should know what happened to the indigenous people in this country. What happened to, to the First Nation people, what, 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 how they were treated. And I suggested to her, I said, look, you know, we're having a march of remembrance and hope which we're taking people from Canada to learn what happened in the Holocaust in Poland and in Germany. I mean, why can't we organize a march of remembrance and hope to take people, Canadians, to both reserves and to places where many, uh, you know, First Nations people are actually living and let them tell the stories of what happened in the residential schools, what happened to them and how they were treated. Because I think people in Canada generally just don't know what has what happened to them, and they should be aware. They must know, and something should be done about it. And this is long before I heard of such terrible things like the latest thing. As a matter of fact, I was listening to the radio. The Ontario government is set, setting up a commission to do, to to do to get together with indigenous people to start, you know, discovering what else had happened, how many more graves there are. I mean, this is. Disgusting. I mean, how is it possible, you know, for human beings to do things like that, to, especially to small children? And so immediately she told me that her mother was a, a residential school survivor. And she came up with the idea that they live in Sudbury, that I should come up to Sudbury and tell my story. Uh, make a documentary, and her mother would tell her story. They wouldn't dovetail it at all. It's just the two survivors of iniquity who tell their stories. And this was done. It's a documentary that one prize this has been shown over. It's called Without Words. And it's a very, very, uh, you know, unbelievably good uh, 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 documentary to show what actually happened. I mean, this lady, the mother of, of uh, of the uh, the uh, of the First Nations person that came to me in 2009 on the March of Remembrance and Hope. I mean, the two of us went and told our stories. We, you know, we, we we said what what happened to us. Now, the one thing that actually, you know, it, it very much is something that 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 touched me because she was telling me how when they were scrubbing them and cleaning them and making them hurt them because they were trying to make them clean for some reason. And they were scratching their hair and, and, and you know, rubbing them and they, they, they actually hurt them. And then I remember when I arrived in one of these concentration camps, the first thing they did, they threw me into a, a huge kind of uh, like, a, like a jacuzzi, but a huge kind of um, uh, uh, concrete things were full of disinfectant. And, I, and if I didn't put my head under, one of these guys stood there, you know, with a, head, with, a, with, a, with a thing, and he knocked me over the head. So I had to go under. When I came out, every orifice in my body was burning. And it just kind of, it just kind of reminded me. And I was only 11 years old at the time. So I really feel that it should stop. This, this, the way that indigenous people, that the First Nations people uh, 
are being treated in Canada generally, not necessarily the worst thing that happened to the residential schools, we're not even talking about it, but the way they're even treated today, that should stop. And people should really take cognizance of the fact that we are all human beings, we must all be treated exactly, and their culture, and their songs, and everything that they have, their whole, their whole beings must be respected. This is the way I feel, and this is the way it should be. I really feel that it's terribly important, especially now when they discovered these, these terrible graves of these lovely little children. I mean, it just breaks my heart. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. <laughs>